What's up YouTube? So this video is going to be about a possible shoddy repair. Shoddy repair on the Char Soon, which it did. I didn't come up with that. That was like a couple of you guys, so good job. This is going to be somewhat of a shoddy repair, and hopefully it turns out to be working because I have a lot of plans for this charger because, I mean, there, it has a lot of potential. Even though I only got about three, three and a half uses out of it, I think there's a lot of potential to it. So I'm going to attempt to repair it. I'm going to be using some used capacitors. I'm going to go check my box of old TV boards and other boards that I've just collected over the last couple years. Hopefully we can find the correct capacitors. Uh-oh, we're off to a bad start. I just had to change the batteries in the camera. All six. All right, so I forgot what I was even saying. Right, okay, so I am going to be shooting for a higher voltage in a capacitor. It seems like every time I do that, those newer capacitors, even though they're used, always seem to last longer. So I'm going to shoot for 100 volts or higher if I have it, and if I don't have it, then, well, then I have to use whatever I can. But at the minimum, has to be 50 volts. All right, so let's go check out the box of TV boards and computer boards and all that kind of stuff and see if we can find the correct capacitors. If not, then we'll check the bins. All right, well, I've been back here for at least a good 20 minutes and I can't find a single 1000 microfarad capacitor on these. Actually, no, I take that back. I have found a couple of them, but they're only 35 volts. And of course I need 50 or higher, so. All of this was a huge bust. I have one more box that has a bunch of random boards in it. I'm gonna check that out real quick. I was for sure thinking that I was gonna have at least one of the capacitors back here, but I don't. And of course, I cannot find one in this pile of boards either. What the f Come on. I mean, there's like a million capacitors on here. Like this one right here. 35 volt, 1000 microfarad. Aha! 1,000 microfarad. Oh crap, the 220. Boom! Now that wasn't staged at all. I probably should have looked here first because this is where I did actually find them. Alrighty, now for the real work. How about we remove some of these capacitors here and see if we can't uh, replace them. And I'll start with the little guy first. Now I do have a solder sucker which you technically don't need because you can just heat up the connections on the back side, kind of rotate the capacitor out. One thing to note with these capacitors is there is a polarity on them, positive and negative. The little stripe right here is the negative side so this little guy right here you can kind of see part of the white strip there but not really Alright, now that we got him out, you can see the top there is pretty swollen. And if we turn it around, the value is a 220. So for this second one, there's a lot of solder underneath there. So what I think I'm going to do is just cut the leads on here. Since I don't have brand new capacitors or anything like that, I'm just going to cut the leads and maybe re-solder to the same leads. There we go. Basically with capacitors, you can up the voltage. You just do not want to change the capacitance. All right, well, like I said, I'm going to be using used parts that I've pulled off just other random electronics over the past couple of years. Having said that, the two 50 volt 1000 microfarad capacitors are definitely different in size. The new part is just a little bit longer, but the good news is it is an exact match. 50 volts, 1000 microfarads. So yeah, the only thing I'm gonna have to do is rearrange how these guys sit in there. Since this one is a little bit bigger, because I did happen to find the exact same size in the 220 microfarad 50 volt 
capacitor. The bad thing is since the 1000 and this 220 capacitor were so close together, I'm gonna have to extend the leads on this one and just kind of move it over to the side. All right, so the only thing that I just did off camera was I added these two copper leads right here. That was just to give me a little bit more room so I can solder on the used capacitor since the leads off the capacitor are so short. And therefore my plan is going to be is basically put the capacitor in roughly straight up and down. It's going to put me a little closer to the resistors that get so hot, but I don't have a lot of options. I could bring it over this way, but I'm still going to be kind of close to the resistors. I don't know which way would be better since this capacitor is so long. So I think what I'm going to do is try to go up and down this way and if I do it like that I don't actually need these little extension leads that I put on here so these may end up coming right back off but we'll see. So what I'm going to do next is solder on this capacitor right here and then we'll work on the next capacitor. Alright I think I have a quick change of plans. I'm actually going to keep the long leads on there and set the capacitor over here that way I am completely out of the way of these resistors right here. I don't know actually how I'm going to keep the capacitor off the circuit board. I may end up using a little dab of hot glue, but we'll see. But anyway, the plan is to put it all the way out of the way of the resistors. Now again, the capacitors do have a negative side. Now on the circuit board itself, there's usually like an angled crosshatch or something related to that, which also indicates the negative side. So make sure you put those in the right direction. probably could put heat shrink over these since it's exposed wire but I don't think I'm going to. Now I just put little hooks on these wires so it'll be a little easier to clamp this down onto the capacitor and then solder it. All right, so for the smaller capacitor, I pretty much did the exact same thing. Just shorten the wires, put some little hooks on there so I can clamp those hooks right onto the capacitor. Alrighty, the next thing I'm gonna do is probably just run a smaller wire from the edge of this capacitor over here over to this little hole right here. I don't know if that's actually burnt all the way through or not. I'm not even gonna check. I'm just gonna put the wire on there anyway. So the first thing I'm gonna do is scrape off a little bit of this upper coating over here so I'm able to get a good connection with the soldering iron. Make sure some solder will stick to it real quick. Good. I will say that I really didn't need to, I guess, solder to that one little tiny spot because that one little tiny hole is technically connected to all of this ground here. So I probably could have just came over to the ground pad itself, but we'll try this first. One thing I am going to do, even though this is pretty sturdy and out of the way, I think I am going to put a nice little dollop or glob of hot glue right up here towards the top just to keep it from kind of bouncing around. Not quite like that, but something similar to that. Alrighty, so while the hot glue is drying, I'm just gonna clean this stuff off and apply some Arctic Silver to it. Maybe that'll help it, maybe it won't, I don't know.
I don't know if I should actually put any of the Arctic Silver on top of these, you know, for the thermal pads. If you guys think it's a good idea, let me know and I will take it apart, put some Arctic Silver on all of these and put it back together. Well, I guess there's only one thing to do now is to put it back together and see if it works. Time. All right, so that actually didn't take very long at all. It just took longer to move the camera around and put it in focus and all that kind of stuff. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do now is just hook it up right here on the bench just to see if it'll even power on. I'm gonna be using a regular computer power supply this time. All right, let's do it. All righty, very sketchy wires right over here, off to the side, underneath the camera. Hopefully those don't slide anywhere. I don't know if I should like zoom in onto that, but hopefully you guys can, well, maybe I can kind of angle it all. Plugging it in right now. Cortex. Oh yeah, the power switch. All right, here we go. I'm gonna stand back just in case. Well, powered on, I guess that's good. Well, I mean, it powered on. I guess it already powered on and I already knew that. So, so let's go take it over there instead. That was uneventful. All right, so I'm gonna pretty much hook this up exactly how I had it before. I have not made any actual charging cables or anything like that. Just wanted to make sure it works first. And if it does, then I will make some new charging cables. So for now, we're just gonna hook it up like I had it before, minus all the cells that are not in here right now. That'll port first, I guess, since it's right there. Sketchy power supply right here. Whatever, as long as they won't, yeah, they might fall. All right, he is securely in place right there, not going nowhere. Okie dealy okie. Battery voltage is still at 3.50 slash 51 volts. Gonna plug in the computer power supply real quick and we're gonna turn it on right meow. And if it blows up, you guys will catch it. All right, so I've got it on lipo charge for 15 amps. All right, well, here goes, ready? Yay, it's working! This is awesome, I'm gonna let it go, I'm gonna do a time lapse on it, and then, yeah, as soon as it's fully charged, I'm gonna replace the cells that, uh, that are missing right over here. And then we'll do one more capacity check on this pack just to make sure it's working correctly. And then maybe we'll do one of the other fully charged packs, one of the better packs in the power rack right now. And we'll see how those two compare as long as this holds out. Oh my God, this is awesome. All right, we are doing 12 amps, even though the antimatter says 15 amps, I'm not sure why at this point it only does 12, but if I go to like 10 or 12, it'll do that. If I go straight up to 20 or 30, it'll do that it's just the 15 amp mark it just likes to do 12 so yeah we are actually charging we're at 3.5859 volts 15 amps okay we are still charging and it's only been 16 minutes and it's still working i've got the time lapse camera there hopefully it does not shut off like it used to back in the day uh, i mean i guess it worked the last couple of times so hopefully that works and if it does blow up hopefully that will catch it but for the time lapse it takes a picture every five seconds so if there's an explosion we'll get it in five second increments after i put out that last video where it blew up hb powerwall put a comment on the last video saying that he would send me his antimatter charger that he blew up his apparently blew up pretty much the same as mine where it blew out a couple capacitors 
capacitors. I don't know if the trace blew out on his, but he did order brand new capacitors, unlike me. So he's also going to send those as well. So once those arrive, I'll probably pull this apart one more time and replace the capacitors with the new capacitors and then put it back together and continue using it. Thanks again there, HB Powerwall. Hopefully those parts get here pretty soon because, you know, my little shoddy work here, I don't know how long it's going to last, but so far it's working out pretty good. Okay, so yeah, I will let this charge and I'll see you here in just a little bit. All right, guess what? We did not burn the house down, so it is still working and we're finally done. And we came out to a total of 186.6851 and oh, nope, that's part of the hours. Uh, 186.6851 five amp hours and it took a total of 14 hours and 10 minutes voltage on the harbor freight meter is 4.19 I would say that is a complete freaking success all right so even though that was kind of a shoddy repair I don't know maybe it was maybe it wasn't I don't know I don't care it worked I guess the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, yeah, what am I gonna do next? Gonna shut all this down, replace the cells. I'm probably gonna be using some new cells. Well, technically they're not new. They're new to me used. And then I'll put the other cells that I pull out of here, maybe back into the bin. I might test them just a few more times just to make sure I still actually need to go through the video and write down the milliamp hours on each cell since I missed it last time. Yeah. So other than that, yeah, I would say it's complete success. And then once HP Powerwall stuff arrives in the mail, I'll rip it apart one more time as long as I don't break it in the meantime, which could be possible. Yeah, I'll take it apart, replace the cell, replace the cells. I'm not replacing cells. I changed cat capacitors in there. <laughs> <laughs> now the real test is going to be after I change all the four. Actually, you know what? It was 15 cells. I, I can't count. Unless I came up with an extra cell in here. So now the real test will be after I change out these cells is to do another capacity check with the charger and hopefully we don't blow it up again. All right, so that's all I got for this video. The next video is going to be changing out the cells and replacing the fuses and then doing a capacity check. All right, we'll see you guys on the next one. Uh, and you can see the, well, maybe you can't. My new helping hand. That looks like part of the pad. It is part of the pad. Part of the pad is bent up. Maybe, oh, maybe I can bend it down like that. Now I can suck the solder right out of you. That sounded kind of gay. So yeah, we're gonna pull off this heat shrink and see what the value is. Oh, there it is, 220. Yeah. And yeah, and then, why must you come over here as soon as I'm start, as soon as I start talking, huh? I'm out of focus. What did I say? 1,000 volt? Um, um, uh, 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 yeah. Damn it. And 2,000. Damn it. Stuck my finger right in it. Um, uh, uh, um, okay, I'm gonna zoom into this just in case it blows up, so give me one second. I will probably do a better, uh, alright, so this is gonna be a moment of truth, let's get it all, truth, I just said truth.